fruits of righteousness I am filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Christ Jesus unto the glory and praise of our God I am filled with the fruits of righteousness I am filled with the fruits of righteousness which are by Christ Jesus unto the glory and praise of our God in Christ I have healing in Christ I have forgiveness in Christ I have redemption in Christ I walk in all yes I walk in all the fruits of righteousness oh yeah I am filled with the fruits of righteousness Which are by Christ Jesus Unto the glory and praise of our God In Christ I have favor In Christ I'm an overcome Son of God and in Christ I walk in all In Christ I have healing In Christ I have forgiveness In Christ I have redemption And in Christ I walk in all Yes, I walk in all The fruits of righteousness Amen. We welcome you to another episode of Just Like Him. I'm Shama, and I'm here with uh, my sister Shalom. We believe that today the Word of God will bless you and speak mm, to you. So right. come along and get ready to hear the Word of God. Amen. Amen. That was a powerful song that we just sang about the fruits of righteousness. We've been discussing in these past episodes about who we are in Christ Jesus that God, He loved us so much and He sent Jesus to the cross to die for our sins and pay the price. And because of that, we can enjoy abundant life here on earth. And God has put us in Christ Jesus. Now that we're born again and we're saved, He has put us in Christ. So all these benefits are a result of being in Christ Jesus. That's right. That's what we've been talking about all this time is what it means to be in Christ Jesus. Mm. And uh, last time we were talking about many things. And the main subject we've been discussing is that God loves you very much. And you can know that today God wants to have a relationship with you. And you can call Him your Father. Mm. And He becomes everything to you once you truly begin to know Him. Yeah. So um, in this episode, we want to talk about something that's really interesting. It's a big word, just like we were singing about righteousness. Yeah. And um, it's not really a difficult word when you go to see what the scripture says. It's pretty simple, actually. Yeah. And the Bible tells us um, righteousness is the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt or condemnation. Yeah. You can come before God's presence Mm. without feeling like guilty and condemned over yourself. Yeah. God and wants you to feel that way. We also looked at that scripture in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, how mm. God made Jesus to be sin for us. And Jesus literally, He didn't just 
carry sin upon him, but he became sin. He became the sinful nature that we had and so that we can receive God's righteousness so that God can make us the righteousness of him in Christ Jesus. That's right. And so righteousness, like Shama said, is to stand before God just as if we have never sinned. God sees us through Jesus, through his blood. And so we have now a right relationship before God. That's right. And we want to take you to the book of 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5, verse 21. Yeah. And you might be wondering, what is this word righteousness? Like we said earlier, righteousness is very simple. It means you can stand in God's presence mm. once you've received him without any sense of like, condemnation or guilt and any feeling like that. Yeah. So let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21. Mm. It says, For he has made him to be sin for us, who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So this verse of scripture is talking about Jesus. Jesus Christ, you understand that he didn't know anything about sin. All right. He was a perfect sinless lamb, but he had to come down and take the sins of the whole world. Yeah. Right. That was a big price. Mm. It was not easy. He had to really leave his home in glory and come down to the earth. Yeah. And see what it says in the next part. It says that Jesus Christ, he became our sin. Right. Yeah. When he died on the cross, he was not just dying there as a figure and just some kind of a as a criminal, right? Yeah. Like they usually crucified people. He was taking our sins on the cross. Yeah. And that was a huge price to be paid. Right. Right. The Bible says that um, he was, you couldn't even recognize who he was when he was taking our sin. Mm. And see what the next part says. Once he has taken our sin, what has he given us? By taking upon himself our sin, he has given us his righteousness. Mm. Right. That's you see, our new nature. Yeah, that's our new nature. You see, we were people who were unworthy, right? We didn't deserve anything that God did for us, yeah. right? That's the kind of people that we were. But God said, I really want to come back and have a relationship with mankind. Mm. So, but he said that that thing called sin is separating them from me. And so what God decided was, he said, I'm going to send my son to the earth yeah. to take the price of sin because he's innocent. Mm. And... As a result, Jesus taking our sin, we receive everything that he has for us. And that is this gift of righteousness. Yeah. What an awesome thing to know. And that. it's a gift. See, yeah. we receive it freely, but Jesus had to pay a price. I mean, when we see the, the figure of Jesus on the cross, I mean, it wasn't an easy thing. It was a really difficult thing. They put nails on both of his hands and they put nails in his feet and they put the crown of thorns on his head and even his side was pierced. That was how painful it was. Jesus bore all of our sins and our sicknesses and even our poverty mm. so that we could receive this gift even though we didn't deserve it, we could receive this gift mm. of righteousness. And you know what's the most amazing part? The most amazing part is that when you have this nature, when you receive righteousness into yourself, right, it allows you to stand before the Father's presence boldly, yeah. right? Maybe you don't know that you can stand before God boldly. You think He's just far away from you and he, nobody can approach Him. Mm. But once you receive Jesus in your heart, you receive this new nature. It's called righteousness, yeah. right? It enables you to stand in God's sight as if you have never sinned. Mm -hmm. What an awesome thing is yeah, that? That's as great. if you have never sinned. Mm -hmm. And let me take you to another scripture in the book of Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 4. And these are so freeing truths to realize that you can come before God's presence without feeling condemned once you've mm -hmm. received him. And it's a good habit to constantly declare over yourself, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. Yeah. I am I'm not a condemned person anymore. God sees me flawless. He sees me in Christ. Yeah. All right. Now, Hebrews 4, verse 16 is an amazing verse. Let's read that. It says, Let us therefore come boldly unto the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Notice that part where it says, you can come boldly to the throne of grace. Mm. I really love that. 
yeah. right? So first of all, we saw that we've received a new nature when you receive Jesus. Yeah. It's the righteousness of God. And the second thing is, now you can come to God's presence boldly. Just imagine mm -hmm. every day of your life, you can stand before God boldly yeah. without feeling like, you know, there's a fear in your life or anything mm -hmm. like that. You can say, Lord, I'm coming boldly to you. I need help right now. Mm. And He's right there with open arms to help you. That's right. That's the most amazing part about yeah. righteousness. Yeah. Right? So it's really amazing. I want to read that verse one more time, the last part of it. It says, come to His throne of grace. Right? I like that it didn't say throne of condemnation. Yeah. Right? God is not a condemning God. He's not sitting up there trying to condemn you. Mm -hmm. His throne is a throne of grace. That's right. right? Maybe you've done some wrong things in your life. Maybe you're a young person and you've, um, you've messed up in life and uh, you don't know exactly what step to take. You can come boldly to the throne of grace. Yeah. Jesus Christ is waiting with open arms to receive you. Mm. And you see what this next part says in verse 16, the last part. It says that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Mm -hmm. I love that. It says that you can find grace to help you in your time of need, yeah. right? You and, need something. Yeah, and even, you know, after we receive this righteous nature, you know, if we do make a mistake and we do sin, you know, the Bible here, it says to come boldly before His throne of grace. Sometimes you might think, or we tend to think, Lord, what if I've made a mistake? And what if I did something wrong? You know, then that means I don't deserve to come before your throne boldly. Mm. Well, we need to realize that the blood that Jesus shed on the cross was like the Bible talks about once and for all. So it was once and for all, for all the sins, for all mankind. And if you read the book of Hebrews chapter seven, nine, and so forth, it talks about once, this word once is so important mm. because Jesus, every time you make a mistake, he's not gonna come to earth and die on the cross and crucify and pay the price for your sins mm. because he paid it for all time. Mm. Once and for all, Jesus became the perfect sacrifice. That's right. And once and for all, He paid for all of our sins. And once and for all, He paid for everybody's sins. And the price was so heavy so that you can obtain His gift to you, yeah. which is righteousness. Yeah. Just imagine, one more time, the word righteousness means the ability to stand in God's presence as if you have never sinned. Yeah. That's the kind of gift that God wants to give you, mm. right? It's not something that you had to earn, right? It was not by your good works. And God doesn't measure um, the gift that He gives to you depending on what you've done. Yeah. He's giving this gift to you freely, yeah. right? It's a free gift. All you got to do is receive that gift of righteousness, mm. right? And like we saw in Hebrews 4.16, you can come to His throne of grace boldly, That's right. right? And it's, you know, it's interesting how your prayers also will start to change. Right? Instead of God, I'm unworthy, I'm still a sinner, I still I'm I don't deserve what you've done for me. Mm. Your prayers will start to change once you realize that you've received this Bold nature prayers. of righteousness. Mm. Bold prayers. Yeah. That's right. You can start praying prayers like this. It's very simple. From this verse you can say, Lord, I'm coming boldly to your throne of grace. Right. Lord, it's me. You know my name. I can come to you boldly. Mm. You know, I love the fact that God knows our name. Mm. Right? God knows your name. Yeah. You're not surprised. You're not surprised to Him. He knows who you are. And you mm. can say, Lord, it's me. I'm coming boldly to your throne of grace. Right. I, need, I need grace in, that, in this time of need. Mm. And I know that your grace is available to me. Yeah. That's the best part about it. His grace is sufficient to us mm. in our times of weakness. When we feel weary and we don't have strength, that's the time to run to God and mm. say, Lord, I need your grace. Or you can say, I thank you, Lord, for your grace. That's right. Because Jesus is the grace of God mm. given to us. So you, when you come before the Lord, say, Lord, I thank you for your grace. Your grace is sufficient for me. Maybe you're having an addiction or something like that. And you feel like, I, I, can't, you know, I can't handle this any longer. Come mm. to the throne of grace. Say, Lord, I need your help right now. Mm. And also what happens is once you begin to see yourself righteous in God's sight, once you see who you are, you're not going to just let sin control your life any longer, mm. right? It's, it's a bondage, right? The Bible says that the spirit that He has given on the inside of you doesn't keep you bound. Yeah. It doesn't control you, right? We'll see that scripture. It's very mm. interesting, right? Remember what Jesus did 
when you accept him into your heart, he puts a new nature on the inside of you, right? This is his own nature. There's nothing different about it. It's a new thing that he's begun in your heart. That's right. Right? And after he puts this nature, you receive this gift of righteousness mm. to stand in his presence boldly, right? Yeah. You can know that today. So let's see what Romans has to say. Romans 8, all right? It says in verse 15, For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby you can cry, Abba, Father. Mm. What a beautiful thing that is. You can call God, Abba, Father. Mm. That's such a beautiful verse up there, yeah. right? See, it says you have not got a spirit of bondage. Right. God didn't give you, uh, he didn't, he didn't um, save you and then want to control you after that. Mm. He's not given you a spirit of fear, he says here. But you have received a spirit of adoption, which means you've, you've received this um, spirit of sonship. In other words, you can see yourself as a son and see God your father and realize that you can come boldly into his presence. Mm. So maybe if it's some kind of a sin and some kind of a habit that you're having that's too difficult for you, immediately say, Lord, I need help here. Yeah. I know that I'm righteous in your sight yeah. and I know that I can stand before your presence boldly. Please help me in this time of need. Yeah. And he will definitely help you. Mm. You just, all you need to do is say, I'll cry out to him and say, Abba, Father, I'm coming to you. Amen. It's very simple, yeah. right? That's right. It's, it's so simple. And we were also singing the song about, I'm filled with the fruits of righteousness. See, when you think of the word fruit, you think about something that's growing on a tree. And you think of a fruit, you think, um, well, it doesn't take so much of effort for a fruit to grow on a tree. Mm. I mean, it doesn't struggle. I mean, it's, uh, it's a time process. It takes time to produce, but it doesn't struggle and find it difficult to produce. Mm. So in the same way, when we come into Jesus Christ, the Bible says that we are born of his incorruptible seed. See, fruits come from seeds, and we have been born of God's incorruptible seed, which is the Word of God. When we said, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are Lord of my life, and I receive you, you were born of God's very seed, God's mm. nature. And then in another place, the Bible also calls us the trees of righteousness, bringing forth these fruits of righteousness. And what are these fruits of righteousness that we were singing? In Christ, I have healing. In Christ, I have redemption. In Christ, I have favor. I walk in all of these fruits of righteousness. Yeah, that's the scripture we saw last time. 2 Corinthians 5, 17, where it says, if any man is in Christ, he is a new creature, mm. right? When Jesus comes into your heart, you begin to see yourself as a new person. Yeah. That's the way God wants you to see yourself. Mm. Right? And it will be yeah. natural for us to produce those fruits. That's right. I mean, we won't have to struggle. The more we are abiding, like Jesus, I remember in um, John 15, it talks about Jesus said, abide in me and I in you, mm. as the branch of itself cannot produce fruit. So when we abide in Jesus, we'll be able to produce those fruits of righteousness without struggling. Naturally, mm. it'll come out of our lives. That's true. Yeah. And abiding in Jesus is to abide in His Word. Mm. Go to God's Word and see, Lord, what do you say about me? Who am I in Christ? That's right. Yeah, it's so important that we see ourselves in Christ because otherwise what happens is if we start seeing ourselves the old person, we will still call ourselves unworthy. Mm. We will still call ourselves um, unforgiven and worthless and no good. When you see yourself in Christ, none of those um, things are there in Him, right? In Christ, you see yourself important. You see yourself special. Yeah. And right now what we're talking about today is in Christ, you will see yourself able to stand in the Father's presence without guilt or condemnation. That's right. You can come boldly into His presence, mm. right? And even when you're praying, you start praying boldly from the beginning of your prayer. Yeah. That's what I see about Jesus. When He prayed prayers, His prayers were always very bold, right? He always recognized um, that He can come to the Father's presence boldly, right? He didn't think that He was not worth it. He saw mm. himself bold and realized that his father was hearing him. Yeah. And so God wants you to see yourself the same way. Mm. In Christ means to see yourself as Jesus sees you. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's very important. That's how that's, God yeah, sees us. That's how God sees us. And you know, sometimes in the beginning, it might be difficult for you to um, get that image on the inside mm. of you. But the more you keep building yourself in this and begin to see yourself, I am the righteousness of God. I can stand in God's presence without guilt or condemnation. Yeah. And like Shalom said earlier, like you might say, what if, what if I've sinned and made mistakes and stuff? Well, according to 1 John 1, 9, as we saw, Jesus Christ says, you can come to me and confess your sins. Mm -hmm. And he said, he is faithful and just to forgive you. Yeah. He is faithful to forgive us. And to cleanse us. From all unrighteousness. Yeah. That's so, how yeah. powerful the blood of Jesus That's is. That's right. To not only just forgive us, but to also cleanse us, to mm. wash away the memory of that sin. That's right. And when you know you come before God, He has no remembrance, no memory of that mistake that you did. Mm. Because when you ask forgiveness from the Lord, it's washed under the blood of Jesus. It is. And the Bible tells us a story about um, there was a boy, uh, we, we sometimes refer to it as the prodigal son. And this boy, he was, you know, he was in the presence of the father, enjoying life. But then one day he decided he just wanted to leave the father and um, see what other opportunities he can get into. Mm. And he just, he thought that he can get a better life um, being away from the father. But then we see he goes out of the father's presence and he messes up his life and he comes to the end of his rope feeding pigs, right? Mm. Just imagine he had everything in his father's house but then he starts feeding pigs because he wasted all of his money. So even if you feel like you've messed up today and you think you're at the end of your rope, don't fear, don't think that life is over. You can receive this righteousness that we've been talking about. God wants to set you free. All you gotta do is say, Lord, I believe in the work that you've done for me. And also we encourage you to write to us and tell us how you enjoy the program. And we believe that God's word has been a blessing to you this day.